Hey, what's up everyone? Darkwing Dad here, bringing you some updates on my Iron Man suit, or should I say War Machine suit that I am building. Uh, it's been about a week. Uh, I got a few things done. Um, I've had some just crazy busy things going on, so I didn't get quite as much done as I wanted to, but I did get some progress done. Um, these projects are not uh, to be rushed. So I did get some traction uh, on some of the uh, body harness and a few other of the electronics that I've been tinkering with. So uh, we're gonna get right into it and show you what kind of progress we got and what we're gonna be doing next for the suit. So let's go. All right, well, again, thank you all for joining in. Uh, I am DW, Darkwing Dead, and I am bringing you some updates with my uh, Punisher War Machine suit. Um, so I had kind of a busy week. Uh, I had another order uh, come in for, ironically, a War Machine uh, helmet, which needs to be done uh, by the end of March, and it's March 11th, and I've got some some progress on it so that unfortunately when you uh when you do commission pieces um those kind of come first so personal projects get put on the back burner um the more and more i do on this suit and the more things i kind of look into how i want them done and my ocd kicks in it's going to be very hard i don't want to say impossible but very hard for me to get this suit actually done to the status that i want by May, um, I will be doing a short family trip. Uh, next week, we'll be at uh, Universal Studios, spending time with my kids, spending time with my family. So I will be getting nothing done next week. So that's going to put me behind. Um, and like I said, just ultimately, um, there's some things that I'm going through on the suit where I'm noticing just more work that I have to do. And of course, I'm documenting it so you guys, uh, you know, kind of know what is involved when you build these suits. Um, Obviously, some people have different techniques and different methods. Mine seems to be walking around in circles in my garage. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's it's just, it's a fun project. It's something that's going to take long. Um, you know, I, I think most guys, when they do these suits that I've seen, it, it takes between three to five months, depending on what level of uh, finishing you want to do. I don't think this project will ever be done. But I'm going to show you guys some of the updates and things we got going on now. So let me grab the suit and show you what I've been up to. All right, so welcome to the disaster that is my garage. Um, so the first thing that I started working on with my suit is uh, is reinforcing everything. And you can kind of see here that I've got uh, some fiberglass reinforcement on here. I am going to add more. Um, I did a combination of uh, PLA welding and fiberglass um, just to kind of get the best uh, of both worlds. I uh, pretty much used um, PLA welds here to weld this together. This is kind of like some scrap that I had that I cut and fit it in there. Uh, this is all PLA welded here and then obviously I reinforced it with some fiberglass. Um, these areas here um, I took some scrap PLA cut it up Again, additional reinforcement, and I'm going to add more. Um, the thing is with these suits is when you start to put them on, they flex and they move, and I was getting cracks in certain areas. So like right here, um, I had a crack, so I reinforced it with some PLA, and you can see I have the body strap, and I'll go over that. Um, but it's, you're not gonna, get, these suits aren't like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe, like, it doesn't matter what percent infill you do. There are certain areas that are going to be weaker than others and that are going to crack. So like this, I picked it up and it cracked right there. 
So I kind of re-PLA welded it, reinforced it, and then I'm gonna come through with some fiberglass and just kind of reinforce all this. I'm not too concerned with how it looks on the inside because this is all gonna have foam and it'll all be covered. So it'll look pretty nice. Um, I'll paint it black. I'll just hit it with some primer and, and paint it black and then put the foam over it. Um, but I reinforced, like I said, even the tops here because these get really weak. So this is all reinforced uh, with uh, chopped fiberglass mat uh, and obviously uh, liquid resin. Um, you can see I've got the actuator uh, in the sh in the shoulder part here. I'll go over, over that. But the first part was reinforcing everything. So I also reinforced the chest part. Um, I merge it together with a nice PLA weld. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do P a PLA welding in this video. The um, rib section, I have to size down. It's too big. So I, I do want to show you guys that and then how I reinforce it with fiberglass. Um, it's probably going to be in the next video just because I didn't do it yet. Um, so I want to have, I kind of, I want to give you good information, but just not too much in one video because I don't want the videos to be super, super long. And I want you guys to lose interest. I want to kind of break it down to specific things that I'm doing and why. Um, but this was PLA welded together. Uh, this will get smoothed out. Um, this whole thing will get sanded. Obviously, I will use uh, filler putty and, um, or I should say glazing putty and then uh, filler primer um, to get this nice and smooth. Um, I've got some areas here where it just printed kind of weird, so I'm probably going to have to use body filler on that. That's quite all right. Uh, but the inside here, uh, reinforced here, I'm probably going to put some more over here. I just threw this Bondo on there because I was doing work on one of my prints and I had some left over and this was sitting right next to me. So I'm like, eh, why waste it? So, cause it seemed a little, I had a little bit of flex there and, and it doesn't really have it now. Um, so I got everything reinforced. I highly, highly recommend reinforcing your prints. Um, especially, especially if you're doing resin, if you do a resin suit, they are super, super frail. Um, so you'll definitely have to reinforce them. If you do a higher infill, you can definitely reduce the amount of flexing and if it cracks and whatnot, but it doesn't guarantee it, it can still happen. So uh, fiberglass, super, super durable, reinforce it great. I highly recommend that. Um, but after I got the majority of this on, um, I wanted to kind of get into the harness. Now, when you look at this, this suit here, um, and I'm gonna add, I'm basically gonna add some nylon strapping right here basically to come straight across as a support for my shoulder and I'll probably put some foam in there. Um, but I don't want my shoulder resting on this because I don't want too much weight on this. Um, this piece, it's not super heavy, but it's got more weight than, than what it had. So I'm probably gonna take some nylon strapping from here to here and I'll actually show you guys what I'm using. Um, don't mind my tortoise, that, no that noise in the background, my tortoise is freaking out. <laughs> um, but I just use this nice, Nylon strapping. Um, this is what I made my bodysuit out of. It's about 10 bucks on Amazon. You can get a ton of it. But probably what I'll end up doing is doing some sort of just support that's tight that goes kind of something like this, just so my shoulder can rest on it so it's not resting on this and putting stress on this. I'll kind of space it out and then maybe put a little piece of foam just for a support. Um, just to take some some pressure off the shoulders there because uh, there's going to be a little bit of weight on this and I've had it on I've worn it um, it's not uncomfortable I just worry that uh, it just might be too much weight on there so probably some more fiberglass in here and then I'm going to make that little strap there just to uh, just to hold on but as far as combining this together so here here is my theory on this and you can even still see how this has a little bit of flex oh you've seen that so this will still need some reinforcement. It's got a little bit of flex. Um, so I'm gonna reinforce that yet. It's trial and error with these suits. You really have to see like how they fit and how they work and everything, but the fiberglass really does work great. Um, getting this suit on, this was, to me, this was the, you know, the, the war machine suit. This was the easiest way to do it because you've got this whole big, you know, back piece and you've got this front piece. So when I started, I'm like, well, I'll just slide it over on top of me but it was so big it looked awkward even with this on now it's it, it's a chunky suit so there's a lot of space and i'm actually probably gonna have to have some kind of harness that goes on here that kind of pulls this in because it just kind of i don't want to say wobbles around but it's just it's a chunky suit so i probably didn't pick the best suit but that's okay um so i looked at it and i'm like well it's two pieces you got to do two pieces so i have obviously the whole back piece and then i have the front piece and the easiest thing 
I thought to do was to have just clips. Um, and I just use industrial hot, hot melt glue. And as long as you put this on with someone helping you, you're not gonna rip these off or anything. Um, these are, I mean, these are, they're solid. They're good to go. These side ones here, I have them kind of loose um, just so you can clip them in. So the idea is with these uh, clips here is to just have it kind of clip in place, I guess like a, a clamshell or a crab shell or something. Now I've got to do a little bit of adjusting. This one is a little bit too tight, um, but the way I have it kind of lining up is I start with this and this one kind of clicks in place. Top one clicks in place. side ones here so like I said this one is a little bit tight so it's actually it actually fits really good um, so I might just readjust this one but it's kind of giving you a general idea I did have to trim these sides down to get it to fit flush like that um, and then the, the big idea is on the side here is I'm gonna have these little latching clips that just kind of come in. The problem is they, this clip, when you try to latch it, it doesn't, it sits too high. So when it latches, see how there's a gap? I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna have to actually raise the clip that it slides into. I'm gonna have to print a little piece and put it on here so it raises it out. Cause when it comes, when it locks in, it just skips over because it's not high enough. So that's the idea is to have this whole suit clip in like this and then have these, I think they're, I think it's called a toggle clamp or something like that. These basically come in and will latch in and hold it in place. That way I've got support on the inside and the outside. Um, like I said, there's a little bit of adjusting that I need to do um, to get it exact, but like on something here where once I adjust this, this will kind of come down to line up here. But if I had that latching clip, it would just lock it right in place right there and keep it completely uniform. Without that piece on, you can see how it's kind of shifting and moving. And like I said, I'm going to need to do adjustments up on the top here. Um, this one sits super flush. And then this one is not quite as flush, so I've got to do some adjustments. I may just kind of grind some of this down, remove some of it, and then just go over it with some plastic metal. I need to do that on the corners anyways. But this is kind of what I mean when you get into building these suits is there's so many things that like fine tuning that you have to do to get it just right. And I'm super OCD. So stuff like this is, is definitely going to drive me crazy, but I know in the end, um, it'll, it'll work its way out. So I've got some gaps here cause I had to trim some things anyways to get these to fit. The problem is when you size these, if it's not sized in one uniform setting, you're gonna have different, you know, like if you scale these at say 115, this is 120, you're gonna have different. So that was the issue that I ran into is my body's obviously not perfectly uniform. So you're gonna have to get into doing things like trimming and stuff like that. A big, big, big tip. Um, I don't know if I have them laying around, but if you need to cut PLA, don't cut it when it's when it's like like do it when it's warm okay take a heat gun take a lighter and just heat it up and then just snip it with uh you know the snippers that you get with your 3d print um i thought i had some on. here we go right here so if you need to trim anything i mean you can obviously get like bigger wire cutters or something like that but what i did right here is i just took a lighter and i heated it up and then just went through and just went snip snip and then just pulled it off and it when it's a little bit soft, it cuts way easier. If you try to cut it when it's just in its natural state like this, it'll crack. So don't do that. So I do need to do some fitting uh, here on the uh, on this part just to get it to fit a little bit better. This actually fits good. I might mess with that. I don't know. It's This is what I mean, the trial and error. So, But that's a general idea of how I'm going to have it. I just have to print little risers to get these clips to come into. And once that clips in, um, this top piece will be uh, will be good to go. Um, but it's pretty good right now. Um, and act, and uh, uh, but it fits good right now. There's just some minor modifications uh, that I need to do. Um, the second part of this, 
um, is the uh, the actuator uh, in the shoulder. And uh, why don't I show you a quick video of that in action. It is for the uh, Canon. So this is one of the electronics that's gonna be featured in the suit, so check it out. So here's a quick look at the suit uh, with me wearing it and displaying the uh, shoulder cannon. Uh, I did go with an alternate power source, so it works a lot faster, but this is to kind of give you a glimpse of how the suit fits and how the cannon works, and I'll show you a little bit more in depth right after this clip is over. All right, so there was a, uh, a look at the, uh, the shoulder cannon uh, that I've got. Um, so obviously I've got, um, yeah, I got adjusting to do like everything. We're, we're just in the beginning stages, but you know, ultimately, um, you know, I've got the shoulder cannon here and I've got to find just the right spot for it. Um, I kind of took the screws out just because I was resting this down and I didn't want it to, to go all, <laughs> to get bent or anything like that. Um, but essentially what I have in here is a linear actuator and um, I'm going to have it wired to a three-way switch um, Or say a three position switch uh, to two-way so it reverses polarity. So these actuators they have to when the Rod goes up. It needs to see polarity one way and then to have it come back down You need to flip the polarity so it needs to see positive and negative one way and then positive and negative the other way so the only way to do this without uh, using you know, an Arduino or, or some coded program like a Raspberry Pi or something, um, is to do it with, with basically a three-way switch. So when you flip the switch one way, so when you flip the switch one way, it raises the gun. When you flip it the other way, it brings it back down. Um, now there's other ways that you can do this. I mean, like I said, if you're using an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or some sort of coded board, um, I'm just doing it all with switches. So essentially the switch will be hidden probably somewhere in my hip or something like that. Uh, it'll look like it's a part of the suit and I'll just flip it when I want it to go up, flip it down when I want to retract it. Now, very important thing if you're using a three-way switch is you want to make sure you shut it off. So if I were to uh, engage the uh, gun and have it come all the way up like that you don't want to leave it in the on position you want to flip it to basically the neutral position because if you leave it on it's going to continue to throw power to that motor and it'll burn it out so i know some people you know they're like oh that it's the wrong way to do it or you're going to mess up the motor as long as you you know make sure you flip it to neutral it's fine um, that's basically how I'm going to do my helmet. Um, the motorized face, it's the same thing. Um, I'm going to have it hidden somewhere in my rib area around my hip. I'm going to flip it up one way when it fully retracts. I'm going to clip it to neutral and leave it. And then when I want to close it, I'm going to close it. So it is a little bit of, you know, button pushing and things like that. But um, it's really the only way you can do it using an analog setup with switches and buttons. So, um, but I thought this was a really cool uh, thing. Um, I have not seen many War Machine suits, and I thought this would be cool. Now what I am going to incorporate on this is a laser pointer. So basically when this um, particular gun goes all the way down to here, uh, it's going to hit a contact switch, and I'm going to have a laser scope on top, and that laser will basically turn on uh, when, it is, when it makes contact, and I'll obviously have a tutorial on how I do that. Um, but it's nothing crazy. Um, I'll turn it on the side so you can kind of see it. Um, it's actually just duct taped in place. I haven't, um, it's not screwed in or I'm gonna end up gluing it in place. Um, you know, it's not a cheap actuator, it's 40 bucks just for this actuator. Uh, it's the perfect size. Um, what I like about it the most is, um, you know, when it deploys all the way down, um, it actually, you don't see the rod at all, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then obviously when you want to have it come up, you're going to see the rod. Uh, I'll probably paint it black or something. Um, so you don't really see, I guess the silver part, but I'm going to end up putting, instead of using screws, I'm going to have a rod with a bearing that goes all the way through. So it's a little bit more, um, comfortable. 
Biggest thing I could say is when you're doing this is you want the majority of the weight obviously in the back because you just want this, the rod is not like attached to the gun, it's just pushing it up. So you want gravity to take over and just let this naturally fall. So I just have one screw kind of holding it in place. Um, all of this is gonna get sanded. I'll ha Like I said, I'll have a little bit bigger of a hole. I'll have a rod going through there. It'll be covered with like an acorn nut or some kind of cover so you can't really tell. And then it'll all get painted in the end. Um, but that's pretty much, you know, the gist of um, the gun. Uh, it's pretty easy setup actually. Um, it's kind of a little crooked. Um, I have it like that, but I need it more like that. So once I get the rod in there, I'll put some washers on just to have it properly spaced. Um, I don't, I don't want it to hit my head. I think it's going to come close, but um, if I move it more this way, it's straighter, but it's closer to my head if I have it more like that. So that little inch and a half plays a big difference. So I'll have to kind of mess around with it, but overall you kind of get the, uh, the gist of how it works. Um, it's like I said, it's a cool uh, little added flair to the suit. Um, like I said, it's just the, the actuator right in there. And it said right now it's just duct taped in place and it works great. So it doesn't weigh a lot. Um, I do have to configure a, uh, a single battery pack setup. Um, right now I've got three batteries. Um, I'm just gonna get one single battery pack though. Um, I have them wired um, in series, so they're giving it a little bit more juice. Before I had just this single battery, it was just way too slow, so I kind of jumped those on. So I may just make a pack with two or two or three of these. Um, right now, it's like I said, we're in the, the tinkering stage. We just want to make sure um, what we can get to work, work. Um, and there's other things that I want to add. I would like the tips, the tips of these once it's painted to have some red in there to make it look like it's shooting or something. Um, like I said, it's, it's going to be a project that's probably never, it's never going to end. I'm always going to be adding stuff to it. Um, but I think it'll be cool once it deploys that little uh, laser scope. I'm going to 3D print an extra piece right here that holds a red laser. Um, and uh, that should be pretty cool as well. So that was one of the uh, added electronics. Um, I also have arm cannons. Um, here's just a quick short clip of how those are working. So again, kind of the same concept. Um, I've got the cannon here. I'm just going to uh, disconnect my current actuator and I will hook this one up real quick. But basically I have it hidden within the chamber of the arm cannon. And obviously when I have it done, I'll, I will uh, hide the wires better. I'll screw a hole through so you don't see the wires. Now this one, I'm gonna get a longer actuator. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really protrude as far as I'd like it to, but um, I was limited on space. Um, let's see here, something might have came. There we go, okay. So it doesn't really go out quite as far as I would like. I like it to come out more. Um, but you get the idea of what I'm going for. So I did order another actuator that's longer. Um, it's about, it's almost an inch longer. So this should come out to maybe about here, which I think is what I'm going for. Still think it's pretty cool. Um, this is gonna be something where, um, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put the, the switch. I may try to put it in the hand cover and something that I can kind of hit with my thumb. I'm not sure. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky because it needs the same um, two position switch to uh, reverse the polarity back and forth. Um, so we'll see, that's gonna take some brainstorming, but again, um, I don't know, I like a challenge and I, I think it'll be cool to see how I attempt to hide the switch and work the switch, um, things like that. So. It's going to be fun. It, I think it'll be cool. It'll be a nice little added flair. Um, I may try to do something with some bearing sensors where my arms get to a certain level and it goes forward and then maybe retract it with a secondary switch. I will just have to use some diodes and some resistors to keep current from crossing because 
understand that in the DC world, if you have power going to one direction and you're trying to share ground with the same and you don't shut something off or something malfunctions, things are going to explode. Not literally, you'll fry something, but so this this one this is very easy it's a simple switch um this will be something a little bit more difficult obviously i would have to fuse it and use certain things and one little mishap and then you have to replace fuses and things like that so it's gonna be a little brainstorming and this once the suit starts to come together where am i gonna put the switch how am i gonna operate it but i'm sure i'll come up with something good uh but i just kind of wanted to show you guys some of the uh the electronics that are going into um the suit currently uh like i said these um basically just rest on the arm so they'll be like this, as you can see in the video. And like I said, I have another actuator and it's gonna have just protrude out just a little bit more. Uh, I think it'll look cool. Um, but overall, I think it's a cool touch. Um, I think between the uh, light up hands, the arm cannons, the shoulder cannon and the faceplate, uh, it'll, it'll grab plenty of attention. I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, so that's pretty much it for the electronics on that. Um, next, I'm just gonna show you guys where I'm at with the bodysuit and some of the changes I had to make in getting this to fit. And we'll kind of wrap up part two. I know it wasn't a ton of stuff, um, but I just wanted to keep you guys uh, up to speed on the updates. So I'm gonna show you the body harness, how I made it, um, and how you can make your own. So let me get get these parts moved around and uh, show you what we got. So the, uh, the body harness, um, it's interesting. Um, it makes me feel like I'm, I don't know, putting putting something goofy on. But uh, essentially the way I did it is, so this is the, uh, the cod piece, and I still need to do some reinforcement on the inside, but I just went with a suspender style um, setup. And um, I just used industrial hot melt glue, works absolutely great. Um, so these are all just kind of glued in. I'll pop my shoes off here, kind of show you how this goes on. Um, I will have kind of like a, I don't want to say a bodysuit, but something that is, is tighter. This is a snug fit, fitment on me. Um, I've probably said before that I was a hockey player for years, so I kind of have a stockier bottom. <laughs> so this, when I put this on, it looks like a big diaper. Um, but when I get the rest of the suit on, it looks a lot better. So I noticed that when I kind of put this on, I got a... I almost have to like pull my shorts up because the hits the hits the pockets. So definitely, when you do these suits, don't wear baggy clothes. Obviously, I'm wearing baggy clothes now. <laughs> but you guys don't want to see me in my in my skivvies or whatever you call them. So the idea is you put this on. And this is just elastic. This isn't the uh, this isn't the heavy nylon. This is just elastic. So once I have um, kind of like little tighter fitting clothes, it'll be a little bit better. These are just my basketball shorts. Um, but you can see, like I said, it looks like a diaper, um, but it fits good. It's not uncomfortable. Um, there is a little bit of play if the suit needs to shift, so that's good. Um, the next thing I did was made basically a waist um, supporter and what this is for is to support the legs um, you don't want the legs the thigh and the calf being supported by this that's going to put extra strain on there so what i actually did is i take this and just kind of clip it in and it just kind of sits just above my hips and it gives me these clips and again this will all get cleaned up i've got to hit these with a lighter to clean up the ends but what this does is this allows me to put the leg pieces on and have the clips come up and clip into there. So it's supporting on your core. It's not supporting on here. You don't want too much weight on these. So you make this little waistband like here and then you can clip everything into that. So um, I do have some other parts that I'm gonna modify. I have these extra elastic straps that I'm gonna have clips that just snap in. I'll have that for the next video, but this is the, the, the general synopsis here. So the thigh, slides on like this and again if you're using basketball shorts and stuff it might be it might fit a little bit tight it's going to kind of scrunch up here but the idea is so I've got one clip on the side and what's nice about this is you can rotate this 
these little clips here I make loops for so you can adjust them. And actually have a look at this clip real quick here on how I made that harness. All right, so you can probably see the some of the madness that is starting to uh, ensue with uh, assembling this uh, suit, or at least get it fitted. So what I'm doing is kind of spacing everything out and I'm starting to hold it up to my body and see where it needs supports and, and where it doesn't. But I wanted to show you um, one way if you're making a body harness, um, how you can use uh, specific loops like these little uh, loop clips here. I think that's what they're called. Um, you can use these to basically make a body harness. So if you don't want to sew anything, so if you need to adjust it later, this is a, a great uh, idea. So basically this little belt that I have here is going to um, go on my waist. Um, the uh, leg pieces that I have, I don't want too much weight on the cod piece, so I'm actually going to have the leg pieces be supported by this. So this will go around my waist, obviously snap on. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have uh, parts that come off that are going to basically attach to the thighs and hold that that's going to support all the legs. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking uh, the way you can do this is you get some nylon and you get these. I don't know what these are called. I'll have to put the link in the dis uh, description. Um, but what you want to do is just kind of want to slide it over like that. And what you're going to do on the body harness is you're going to make a loop and you're going to go into the same hole that this is threaded to or through, I should say. So we're going through the same first loop hole. Okay. And what that does is that makes a nice loop connection and we can tighten that if we want to. And then we loop this back up and then if you want, you can either hot glue this, you can drill a hole through it, zip tie it, do whatever you want. I'm actually gonna leave it, that way if I ever need to adjust it, I can adjust it, but it keeps it firm, but still allows it to slide on the belt. You don't want, when you're making, and I'll, I'll show you when I put the suit on, you don't want all of the weight on the cod piece. Um, the legs being supported by this is gonna be much more practical. That way, if they pull or something, they're gonna pull on this nylon, not on a piece of PLA and possibly break or have something come loose. So like I said, this is gonna go around my waist and then this is um, just a nice way you can do it without having to sew. And it is pretty, I mean, I'm pulling pretty hard here. It's moving a little bit, but all it's actually really doing is, is scrunching this up. So um, I once I get it, fit better I, I may just put some hot glue and hold this together but i kind of like the idea of if it needs to move it can move and it won't stress the pla it'll stress the harness which is what i want i don't want it to crack the uh the suit obviously so i think i'm honestly just gonna leave it but i'm gonna leave some slack here i'll probably take a lighter and burn this just so it's cleaner but i mean this is pretty you know like i said you gotta pull it pretty hard um and like I said, it's really just crunching the belt. So I think this whole setup here is gonna work once I actually get it harnessed in place. Uh, but I wanted to show you a nice way to make a nice little loop without having to sew once you get your Bonnie harness on. Now, if you're comfortable with the way it is and the way it sits, I would definitely recommend drilling a hole through here and zip tying it or putting some hot melt glue so this doesn't shift. Um, I'll see how this fits and how it, how it moves and how it forms if I wanna do that or not. But regardless, this is gonna be some nice support. So what I'll do is when I get this measured, I will cut this and uh, I'll add uh, a clip, basically the same thing that I have here. I'll have a female and a male that the male end will come off of the top of the thigh. The female end will come off of this waist harness. They'll click together and that'll create my support. So that's kind of the idea behind the, uh, the harness here. So. Um, I'm going to cut some more things, get some more things uh, adhered in place and kind of sh show you what I'm doing and how it's all going to work. All right, so uh, here we are moving on to the right thigh and I just want to show you guys how and the method to my madness. So I am using hot glue to adhere all of these straps on. Um, I think it'll be fine. Um, but the other reasoning behind why I'm using hot glue is I have a feeling that these straps are probably going to get trashed 
during the sanding process, which I don't want. I want them to stay nice and clean and black. So the reason for using hot glue is if I need to, I can just kind of heat this up and, and remove these and then glue them back in place. Um, hot glue is cheap. It's, it's easy to replace. It's no big deal. These straps, not that they're super expensive, but um, I need to have, I need to see how the, the suit fits before I get into sanding it and things like that, because I don't want to put filler or putty or resin or whatever on here and then cut it after the fact. So the reason behind this is to is to get the, the suit on, see how it fits, modify any areas that you need to, and then sand and then start doing your smoothing process using putty or whatever you're using in your filling process. So um, that's why I'm doing that. But essentially this is the right of the thigh. And I actually, I, ha I have actually have my cod piece on right now. I got my suspenders going here. So I'm, I'm walking around, seeing how it fits. It feels pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is these nylon straps here, because these are on the side, the outer side, and then the rear, these will have the clips. And then this um, is just elastic. I'm just gonna have this loop around the waistband and have that little tie trick that i kind of showed you uh previous there's my dog sleeping too um so that's the idea with that the reason why i went with elastic on here is because it's a little bit tighter on the inner thigh and um you won't really see a lot of it and this is a little bit thicker so i figured i'd go with elastic on the interior and then loop this around and kind of make my own um harness when i put it on i'll just have to kind of loop this through and harness that these all just click in place uh, it should overall look pretty good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting the clips on and then adjusting it and do a test fit of the thigh and see how it works. Okay, so that shows you how to make these little loops. That way, if you have to adjust this, at first I was going to have my wife sew these in place and then I just made these little loops. So if you need to move these, I don't know if you can see that, but you can just move these right on the waist anywhere you need be. So um, what I do is it can be a little difficult at first, but you can see now it's got, you have instant support now on your thigh. So I've got that one here. This one's gonna go in the middle and kind of come up. Now, the idea for this, this is elastic. So for the time being, I was just kind of tying it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually have it loop around here and I'm gonna have a button snap and it'll just snap in place. That way we've got support on the inner thigh. For now, I'm just gonna tie it, just so you can kind of see where I'm, where I'm coming from, but I'll have a snap clip for that. Okay, so we've already got really good support on the thigh, but we want some support in the rear. You always wanna support the rear, that's just a joke. But, um, so I've got this one in the back here, and that's gonna come up through the rear, and it's gonna connect to this one right here. So you basically just need to position that and you can always tighten these and loosen these but that puts the thigh on and it's yeah, it's a little little loose but it, it'll it'll stay in place ultimately i'm going to add some foam in there but it's a good fit um i've got flexibility i've got mobility uh very good fit i think it works out well now i stated in my last video that i thought the calves were too big the calves in the shin they were so I did end up reprinting them in purple. That was just what I had laying around. Um, this one fits a lot better, but the white one that was too big has the harness. So I'll just show you how, to, how it clips on. The reason why I had to do this is because the kneecap was just, it was, which is right here. It was just the, it wasn't lining up right with that one. And I didn't like the way it fit. And I thought the calf was too big. And sure enough, this one fits way better. It is tighter, but that's good. This one's huge. So I did end up having us on another roll of filament. It was about 455 grams per leg. Um, but I'll use this as a, a demonstration on how the uh, how the, uh, the shin and the calf goes on. Now, what you want to do is basically put your um, knee piece on first. And again, this one gets kind of weird because I have these two straps in the back that have to feed all the way up. So it is kind of a weird fitting process but ultimately this kind of comes up through here 
And again, all these straps need to get reduced down. I need to trim them and hot glue them in place. Um, but that kind of goes on there. And then I've got these, and this is the pain in the butt where I've got to really figure out how to do this better. But these ultimately go up the leg and I had them go all the way through. And it's actually better to do it all in one piece. Um, but these essentially end up coming up through here and up through the cod. And then same thing, what I'm gonna do is support these on this waistband. That way when these are supported, the le but you can see how the leg is so big, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see that, it's like pulling off to the side because it's, it's too big. So this leg was unfortunately too big, so I had to print it smaller. So this one ultimately will get scrapped because it's just so gigantic. Um, what I'll end up doing is just repeating the harnesses on this one. This one fits a heck of a lot better. It's a lot more snug. And uh, obviously I don't have the straps in there, but you'll just be able to see from putting this on how much easier. So this one fits a lot better. It's like I said, it's still a little bit loose, but size wise, um, this one is gonna fit me a lot better. And I'll do the same uh, idea where I'll have the strap come up in the front and the kneecap will essentially cover uh, that those clips and I'll have the elastic run all the way up through here and then attached to the middle piece. Um, and that should work out should work out pretty good. Um, like I said, it's once I get some foam in these pieces, they'll be a little bit more stable. But that's the general gist of just the cod and the legs. Now I didn't do the harness on the other side, simply because you really only need to do one side of the body and then just mimic that on the other half. What stinks is from sanding, from painting, um, you know, all these straps here are really gonna get pretty trashed. Uh, I'm gonna try to wrap them in bags and uh, just tape them to try to keep them as clean as possible. But um, it, it's it's gonna be hard. So I'm trying to um, keep the straps basically as, as clean as possible um, to try to make, make them not look like garbage because there's gonna be little gaps here and there in the suit. And uh, obviously we want the straps to be nice and clean. Um, so that way you don't see the straps, um, but it'll be, uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see, you know, how this whole thing, uh, kind of plays out. Uh, like I said, it's definitely, uh, a game of patience, but when you get it done, it'll definitely be worth it. So that was just kind of the, uh, the configuration I have for the, um, for the bottom half. And I've put that piece on numerous times and I haven't heard any cracking or any um, any shifting or anything like that, which is good. Um, it's just, like I said, it's going to be a, a, a slow process um, on getting everything to fit. Um, you know, you're definitely not going to be able to jump over hurdles and dunk a basketball on these things. You, you do kind of <laughs> move like a robot. Um, but that's pretty much it for the bottom half. Um, I'm going to kind of wrap up and let you know what's going to be in the next video and show you what we have to look forward to. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. That's a wrap for this little segment. Uh, just a short update on the suit. I promise you guys it keep you up to speed. And I know it wasn't a ton of updates, maybe not as much as you wanted, but these suits do take time. That's definitely one thing that I am realizing that if you want to do these suits right, uh, there is no minor detail that should be overlooked. So even those little intricate areas on the shoulders where I was saying I got to touch them up and there's just so much work uh, that can go into these suits. Um, and that's why I said, I, I don't really think it's going to be ready by May. I'd like to unveil it in Pensacon, but I don't think it's going to happen. And it's no big deal because I don't want to rush my work. Um, if you guys see my helmets and stuff, you probably sit there and say, man, why does it take you so long? It's just because I'm OCD. There's, there's no way around it. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope uh, some of the content here uh, kind of helped you. Um, give insight on or maybe guide you on uh, ways to do things, a body harness, uh, some of the electronics, and we'll, we'll have more 
in-depth, you know, tutorials and things. This is just a glimpse at what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, just to show you how the suit might look. Um, you know, unfortunately I had to switch things up and, uh, you know, reprint these legs. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where, is it worth it to save 20 bucks to have the legs kind of not fit and not look and feel the way you want? You want the suit to be as comfortable as possible. You know what I mean? So I looked at it as like, eh, you know, um, you know, 16 bucks for a roll of filament, you get two legs and they, again, they printed really good, man. 0 0.32 layer height. This, these were both done on my CR 10 V3. Uh, very nice. Um, still got some supports and stuff. I just literally popped this off yesterday. So, uh, but these will work a lot better. Um, I'll have some updates on that. Um, in the next video, section three and section four, um, I will have, I will be completing the rest of the harness. Um, I should have the upper torso area, um, the clips and everything done. So we'll fully clip that on and then we'll attach the arm piece. I don't know if I'm going to put the straps on the, on the, on the new legs, because like I said, the straps are going to get really dirty from sanding and I'm really trying to conserve and, and preserve those. Um, I have some of the arm pieces done. It's just, I run out of glue. Um, got to use industrial glue. It works awesome. The black glue. Um, I ran out. And then can you believe it? Like no place locally has it. Like they only have the huge ones. So um, I had to order more of that. That's on the way in. But next video, uh, we will be, I'll kind of be compiling the rest of the bodysuit. I'll be doing the side ribs, the abdomen area, and then the arm. And then realistically, the harness will be done. Um, we can start sanding. So obviously um, the chest piece, you know, we can start sanding the legs. There's certain pieces that I can get right into sanding arms, legs, hands, things like that. Um, the cod piece, I still have to do some PLA welding on these pieces. This is going to need some body filler. Um, there's some reinforcement that I need on the inside. I can't stress that enough, guys. Don't force or don't rush non-reinforcing your pieces. Um, you know, they're going to flex. They're going to move. I mean, if it cracks, it's like you got to go all over. So I'm, I might be overthinking my process a little bit with the reinforcement, but trust me, it, it will pay dividends. So um, I'll have some more updates on the fiberglass, how I did that, how you can do that. Um, and just, like I said, just, just kind of updates as we go. It's kind of stuff that's on the fly, whatever I do during the week. Um, but I'm just trying to share my journey with you. Cause I think a lot of times people build these suits and they make them seem like they're so easy and they're really not. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So I'm trying to be as upfront as possible and show you all the hiccups, all the obstacles, all the trials and tribulations and the victories that I'm having in building the suit. So, uh, definitely some small victories here. Um, getting the body harness, uh, hopefully the clips there helped you. Um, give you some insight on that. Um, we'll have some updates for it in video three and four. Uh, I will hopefully have um, the electronic faceplate um, done. Um, I've got everything printed. It's just getting time to get it exactly narrowed down and sit down where I'm not bothered because it has to be so precise. Um, but I'm using the Mark 7 um, hinges and everything from Crashworks. So that should turn out great. Um, two servos, I'm using the MG90s, I think they are, the metal ones. Um, again, switch things up, I was using the plastic ones and after talking to a couple people, they're like, yeah, they're gonna wear out. So I upgraded and got better ones, but uh, that will probably be in video four, um, but we'll see. Um, the major dilemma that I'm having is I'm not sure which, which helmet I'm gonna go with. I've printed the Mark IV, which is the war machine from Endgame, but I really like the way that the Mark II looks, uh, which is this one. Um, so I'm not sure which one to do. Um, let me know what you guys think. Should I do Mark II or should I do Mark IV? Or should I just do both? I don't know. Um, but I like the way this looks because it's a little bit sleeker. Um, but I haven't really seen anybody do the Mark IV. So I, I want to be the first, but I know I won't be. So I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. Should I do a Mark II or a Mark IV? Um, other than that, guys, I'm gonna stop blabbing because I do that way too much in these videos. Um, like I said, I'll have more electronic updates uh, next video. Um, the remaining clicking and piecing of the bodysuit. Hopefully, I have the cod suit, or, the, or the, the not the cod, the, the upper torso completely done. I should have the cod piece all reinforced. Uh, everything good to go there. And then we're just gonna get into some sanding, you know. So we're gonna be using some glazing putty, uh, the Bondo uh, filler primer. 
And that's going to be my uh, my whole arsenal for getting the suit nice and smooth. It's a lot of sanding, a lot of intricate time. I'll have lots of videos on getting in those little intricate areas, different tools and things that I'm using. So make sure that you come back for future segments. I don't know how many segments it's going to be. It's probably going to be a few, but hopefully it'll be helpful for you. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. If you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. Uh, if you're not, go ahead and click that subscribe button because we got a lot more helpful info on the way um and if you have any comments or questions leave me a comment or if you have a way that you're doing something that could help me let me know because i would love to save time and get this suit done sooner it's probably not going to happen but you never know but that's pretty much it for for now guys uh look out for that mando unveiling helmet we will be unveiling it at universal studios for one of my darkwing fans uh, it was a custom order that came in so we're going to be meeting up with them and showing them in person so make sure you check out that video uh the helmet turned out awesome can't wait to show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to get this area cleaned up so I don't get yelled at because it's a mess. Um, but make sure you check back for uh, part three and part four. Uh, those will probably be up. Part three will probably be up in about 11 or 12 days. Probably going to be about two weeks just because I'm going to be out of town. But I will have some cool info for you. So um, that's pretty much it for now, guys. I'm going to get everything cleaned up and get the rest of my day going. So until then, we will see you next time for part three. Later.